and welcome to episode 3 of Project Slave 1. In the last episode, you'll have seen me assemble and modify the main components for my 3D printed model of Slave 1. I'd modified the nose to make it slope downwards, and also lowered the side walls of the cockpit, which had made it wider. Despite these modifications, I still felt that the cockpit profile could be further improved to make it more screen accurate. The spine of the model was horizontal, and didn't match the angle of the tail, so I decided to make them both the same angle. This looked much better, and allowed me to further lower the upper edge of the cockpit. Now I've got a profile that I'm finally happy with, and can move on to the next stage of the build. Having butchered the interior, I now needed to begin the process of reconstruction. I started by 3D printing two new side frames to the cockpit. I decided to 3D print them, as it was going to be a lot easier than fabricating a matching pair from Styrene. These would provide support for the canopy, and also help give depth to the sides of the cockpit. Once they were super glued into place, I'd be able to start thinking about the interior. Unfortunately, I noticed in the photos of the studio model that there was a well in front of the cockpit canopy. So, after cutting out more of the nose, I inserted another 3D printed section. The print was blended in with another round of milliput, and the cockpit rails now glued in place were also carefully tidied up. After a few more rounds of sanding and filling, I added a redesigned front screen to the cockpit. Finally, I had a cockpit profile I was happy with, and was fairly accurate to the original. Now, onto the elephant in the room, the rotating cockpit itself. I've already mentioned in the previous episodes that while I want to make a visually accurate model of Slave 1, I do want it to have a degree of engineering credibility as well. Slave 1 has a rather unique design feature. When it's on the ground, entry is gained by a retracted boarding ramp at the back, and the ship is like any other conventional craft. Where Slave 1 differs is that it flies having rotated through 90 degrees. This means that the cockpit also has to rotate to be in two positions, one for landing and one for flight. There have been many proposed solutions to this problem over the years, and this is mine. We can assume that given the fact that in the Star Wars universe, no one's floating around in their spaceships, that a form of artificial gravity has been discovered. This is my proposal for the interior of Slave 1. It's split on two decks, with a stair just inside of the boarding ramp. The flight deck is on the upper level, with a possible hold and armoury below. With Slave 1 in flight, the cockpit has to somehow rotate so that the pilot can now fly the ship. The rest of the ship remains in the same orientation for the occupants. Here's an animation of my solution to this problem. This is the landing position for the cockpit, with all seats facing forward. I've given the upper deck five seats, with three being at the flight controls. Firstly, the rotating platform with all three seats turns through 180 degrees. Then the whole platform tips back through 90 degrees to the flight position. A ladder through the new floor now allows access between the two areas of the flight deck. And these are the main 3D printed parts that will make up this cockpit unit. The main box already has some cutouts for detail to be added later. I could have made this in styrene, but given the amount of handling and refitting, I thought 3D printing in ABS would be a lot more durable. I'm building Slave 1 in flight, and the two parts that make up the rotating section reflect that. This section tightly fits into the main box, with the two floors lining up perfectly. The lower bulkhead fits in the back, and the small cabin in the nose fits neatly in place. The upper bulkhead just slides in. I wanted a 1 to 34 scale figure, so that I could use as a reference for Slave 1. I was fortunate to discover this 3D model from BRAD Builds. It's an excellent recreation of Boba Fett, and is perfect for my build. You can see more of the BRAD range on the BRAD YouTube channel. There are some great subjects on there, and the sculpting is fantastic. I only needed a 1 to 34 scale figure, so I scaled down the files and 3D printed the parts on my resin printer, along with some other parts I needed for the cockpit. 
parts came out well, with one or two needed a little attention, but I had everything I needed. After a quick clean up and assembly, I gave Boba a coat of primer, and here he is. He's my first 3D printed figure, and he came out really well. This is such a cool pose. Let's see him next to Slave 1. As you can see, Slave 1 is a decent sized ship, and Boba looks great next to it. This figure really deserves to be printed out in a decent size, and given a good paint job. Well, I can do something about that. So, I fired up the printer again, and 3D printed this bad boy. From the soles of his feet, to the tip of his blaster, he's 185mm tall, or 7.25 inches in American. Of course, you could print him any size, but this is big enough for me. Like all 3D prints, there is a degree of filling and filing, but I think the results speak for themselves. This is such a cool figure. I'll be painting and mounting him on a base in future episodes, so make sure you subscribe to my channel to see the end result. Right, let's get back to Slave 1. For a bit of design inspiration for the cockpit, I found this concept art for the interior by Ryan Church. It has some good ideas for colours and textures, as well as the design of the seats and controls. I designed these parts in my CAD software and 3D printed them on my resin printer. The flight control console, the seat, the gun sight and the ladders all came out really well with lots of detail. After a bit of filling and filing, I decided to make silicon moulds of the seat, joysticks and sight, so that I could cast them in pewter. You can find out more about this moulding and casting process in my how-to video series. This is how the seat is cast in the mould. I'll need five of these. And here are all the rest of the parts, fresh from the moulds and ready for a few hours of cleaning up by hand. They cleaned up well, and will certainly be a lot more durable than just 3D printed in resin, especially delicate parts like the sight. I've now detailed up the rest of the cockpit parts with strip and sheet styrene. This was a really enjoyable process, having a free rein to create interest on these basic 3D prints. The resin and metal parts were also tweaked to fit onto the main ABS parts of the cockpit. And this is how it looks, with everything dry fitted into place. It now looks a lot more like my original animated model. Let's test fit it into the front section of Slave 1. I've also detailed up the inside of the front shield with styrene and fitted the sight in place. Now. Let's see how well the cockpit fits. That's really good. Way better than I was expecting. It looks totally at home there. Now I just have to get it painted. But first, I want to improve my seat castings. The handles on the sides of the seat didn't cast well enough. So as I was doing some photo etching for another project, I decided to add some handles onto the sheet. They etched well and look great. You'll be able to see my how-to guide for designing photo etching in an upcoming video, so don't forget to subscribe to catch it when it comes out. Now, on to my least favourite part of model making, painting. Slave 1 is a bit of a minefield to paint, not least because of the crazy paint scheme, but tracking down the correct colours is a nightmare. Fortunately, ArchiveX have come to the rescue. They specialise in formulating the correct enamel and acrylic paints for the Star Wars universe, and even supply a set for Slave 1. They're very helpful, and advised me exactly what to buy for my build. A couple of days later, and my acrylics arrived, just what I needed. So that I had a reference for the colours, I made up a sheet of swatches on some styrene. This would give me a bit better idea of what colours to choose to paint the cockpit. I started by giving everything a base of matte black from a rattle can, as this would be a good start for pre-shading. I also designed and printed some decals on my inkjet printer, to add some extra interest to the interior. I found an appropriate looking alien font online, and used it to create some maintenance stencils and markings. I also added some vents and grills, which would look fine buried within the cockpit. 
After a couple of evenings with the airbrush, this is what I came up with. The base colours are all Archive X. I then added a few washes with Artist Oils, applied the decals where they seemed logical, and then gave everything a coat of Windsor & Newton matte varnish. There are lots of great painting tutorials on YouTube. I'd particularly recommend you check out LPJ Models channel for some great techniques. It actually went a lot better than I expected. These Archive X paints are a real pleasure to use. I now hate painting slightly less, which is a good thing. And here are the two main units, fully painted and assembled. The rotating section is able to be removed from the cockpit even when it's installed into the main hull. So I'll be able to keep it safe while I work on the rest of the build without it getting damaged. Here are a few close-up photos of the cockpit so you can judge for yourself what you think of my solution to Slave One's rotating cockpit. The next stage of this build is to permanently install the cockpit and join the main hull sections together. Unfortunately, I have to detail up the underside of the tail and boarding ramp first, as they'll be too hard to get to later. I'm really pleased how this build is going. There's still a lot to do, and a few more problems to overcome, but that's all part of the fun of scratch building. I hope you're enjoying Project Slave 1. If you are, please share with your friends, and make sure you subscribe to my channel. So you catch my next video when it goes live, click on the bell icon. As you can see from my channel, I always have lots of projects going on, which I hope you'll find interesting. These range from my Staples and Vine models, featured in Sarah's vlog, to short projects and my popular how-to series. If you have any questions about Project Slave 1, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.